I left my family. I left my kids. I left my nightclubs, my parking company, $35 million to fight the fight. Welcome everyone to another episode of Mafia Truths with John A. Light. I'm Felix Levine. To my right, John A. Light, and to my left, his brother, Jimmy A. Light. And before we get into our episode today, a quick reminder to subscribe to our Patreon. If you haven't done so already, we just posted a couple of bonus episodes there. Early access to all our content, the opportunity to ask John all of your personalized questions on our monthly Q&As. So go check that out. The link to that is in the description of this video. We've also been selling signed baseballs by John, signed baseball bats that have been very popular by John. Uh, so if you want one of those, you can now go to johnnylight.com and order them directly there. It should be up by now. If you have any issues or any questions, please feel free to reach out at felix.levine on Instagram, and I will get you set up. If you're listening right now, please make sure you subscribe, uh, rate, and review the show five stars. Also subscribe, and uh, John's going to show you really quick what those signed baseball bats look like. Um, so we've been selling a ton of those. We have a new shipment coming in soon so if you'd like one get in on it uh as soon as possible and if you're a, a member of the patreon you get them for a discounted price so uh keep that in mind today jimmy uh thank you for uh coming on the show this is my first time meeting you um and i know you and john did a, a show a, a few years ago but this is your first time on our show so welcome thank you felix good to be here good so to be here with you and brother john brother john and we'll go home and we'll fight after yeah. this. Don't worry. We fight all the time. Him, brother John, We're crazy. That's whatever. <laughs> so I think right off the bat, um, since it's my first time meeting you, I'm just very curious, uh, you know, what's it been like? I think the, the the question everyone has is what's it been like to to be this guy's this guy's brother um, and, you know, see him obviously from a young age until, you know, his the, all the work that he did to, to the man he is now. Yeah, I mean... You know, when you're talking to a brother, it's very natural because everything is, 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 you know, nothing, there's no big jumps. It's kind of like a natural progression in life. So um, if you look at it from a distance and you say, and you, and you, you fall back to when he was a kid as to now, you can obviously see big differences. But when you're gradually moving with him, you know, you really, you're so close. We're, we were very close our whole life. So I'd say we're best friends for you know most of our life. So it's uh, again, if you if if you look at it from my perspective, it seems very natural. If that makes any sense. But Felix, you, to Jim, tell him. So you know, for the people who don't know, our dynamics in our family is crazy. So, you know, one time we had a fight, right? And this is natural for us. He'll tell you. And he had a belt buckle in his hand with a with a belt. <laughs> and you ever watch the Godfather scene when he kills him when the <laughs> Michael Corleone kills yeah, him, yeah, drops that. the belt. He put the belt and the belt buckle across my body. I had the belt buckle was marked in my face down my chest. I know. How old are you? How old are you? I don't know. How old were you? I don't know. <laughs> last <laughs> week. No, was early was teens or whatever. Week ago. Yeah, yeah, last week. Ago. <laughs> no, last week it was a stick. <laughs> but we're used to it. You know, people don't understand us. But then on the other hand. But the best part was when I dropped the belt after I did it, yeah, just like did. Michael Corleone. Yeah. I mean, it's just how we, you know, we were crazy. We just fought like, you know, that way. But then if somebody fuck with us, you know, we would go tack the shit out of them. And and you know, I hit him once with a with a tree trunk, uh, a you know, a pretty thick, and I broke it over his ribs. I cracked his ribs. So you know, people say like, when they see us do each other, but I'm leading into something. So. There was an incident where we're not sure if the guy was looking for me in the past, and he was driving, and then you can kick the story in, Jeff, because... Yeah, yeah. So we're driving, and uh, we're just chilling out. We're fooling around. We're laughing. It's like, sets. I think it was a Sunday night. I just got out of jail. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it was One uh, of the jail sentences. Right after a football game or something like that. So we went out to do so. I don't know what we went out to do. It was earlier evening, like 7.30. But... Um, and it was quiet. It was kind of a quiet evening. But anyway, I was turning on one of the corners near our house, not too far from our house. And some guy's looking to turn the other way. And for some reason, he curses or he looks at us when we're turning. And he start, turns around and he comes after us when I'm going one direction. He turns around and does a U turn, quick U turn. And Johnny goes, Pull over, pull over. I go, What are you talking about? Why am I going to fucking pull over? And he goes, The guy's behind us. I go, So what? With the, you know, I usually. He's the one that calms me down, to be honest with you. But anyway, we pull over, and the guy jumps right out of his car. 
So um, we get out and uh, John's like running in front of me, you know, like jumping in front of me first. He's in the passenger seat. And um, I get out and I see the guy going for his, for his belt, like inside his thing. So I think he's pulling out a gun. So I jump in front of Johnny at the last second and I kick the guy right where he's pulling his gun out or what I appeared, it might, may have been a gun, I'm not quite sure. And then John came over top and hit him with a punch. And then we, you know, the, the gun, I think the gun went flying across the thing. Then he, the guy had a pipe and uh, somehow or another, we started beating him up. And uh, what was funny was, is I, I, got, I was pulling him around the shirt, Johnny was hitting him. And I said, you know, it's better that we do it this way, John. You hit, I'm talking to him while during the fight. Talking to my brother, right? So I'm saying, you do that. I don't hold him, you know, and I'm holding him down. And then there's a list, a line of cars. And Johnny pulls the pipe from the guy after he's punching him and then starts piping him. And there's a bunch of guys coming out of their cars and they're trying to stop him. And I'm talking to the guys and saying, mind your fucking business. You don't know what happened, mind your fucking business. So they're coming and Johnny's going to work on the guy. And I'm holding the guy while Johnny's going to work on him. And it was just, uh, the guy was a tough guy though. Yeah, he was a strong guy. I said that, you know, he, he was, you know, an average size guy, you know, probably six foot or something, but he, he, very strong. I was shocked myself because, you know, when you fight with somebody, you can, you feel him and he was strong. He was, I think his adrenaline was going because he, I, you know, he, he wasn't expecting what he got. So, you know, he got out, was not expecting, I could tell he wasn't expecting this, even though he, he's, you know, whatever he did, he did. But I don't think he expected to run into us like the way he did. <laughs> So I don't really know. We never really did find out who he was. Well, I, I how the cops he's alive, I got to tell you, because, you know, uh, you know, he'll tell you. I must have batted him, too. I don't know how these guys survived these battings, because I'm not hitting him in the legs. I'm hitting him across the face, the head, you know, the shoulders, everything up top. I don't yeah, really go to the body great. too much. Yeah. Oh, he was, he was. You well, know, I pulled Johnny away. And he said, you're going to kill him, you know. I now, pulled Johnny away. Now, yeah. was, uh, in your eyes, from your perspective, um, was John, I guess, like naturally uh, inclined to be violent, or do you think it was kind of where you guys grew up? Um, no, it was where we grew. Up. I think it's well, it's 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 usually a combination, right? Let's let's be honest. It's a combination of genetics and environment. So we had like a double whammy because our family was all mafia. So we had my mother's side was Albanian mafia. Her, you know, we her, never talked about that. You know, my mother's father killed two guys. He was a gambler. My mother still says he, it was self-defense, yeah. and it was. And we laughed because it was over poker games. He kills the guys. Yeah, he had two a, different answers. He had games. He was actually in Pittsburgh, which is a lot of gangsters in Pittsburgh yeah, at yeah. the time. But we had it on both sides. So my uncles, my father was around a lot of guys. My mother's side was, and we grew up as kids with you know. I think Johnny mentioned Luciano's. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, 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 one of his cousins, or I don't know exactly. Yeah, Charlie Luciano. And there were a guys. bunch of blackies. There was a bunch of guys, and we, so we were kids. We grew up around them, you know. We grew up around a lot of people. I'm not going to just say it was just mafia guys, but we definitely had that inclination um, to be tough. Let's put it that way. My father raised us to be tough. And did you ever fear, uh, for I guess for yourself and for John, that he would be on, uh, or you would be on the, the wrong path? No, you don't really think of it like that, I don't think. I think that you think of it like um, you don't think you're doing anything bad. Mm. You know, I mean, I never thought I was doing anything bad. Let's put it that way. You just think you're making a living, you're doing things. I mean, I never really did anything that, how do I put this? I never really did anything that I could have done to, to, to hurt people. I just did things I had to do. Mm. So it's a different, different angle. Johnny was a little bit more uh, severe. And a little bit more raw than me. I had more of a conscious, uh, I had more, uh, I guess I thought about God more. No, yeah, I, seriously, really? at the time. Well, you didn't think about God when we shot that guy in a, you know, tell, you know, there's so many things that he was involved with, you know, that the stock market, then he was involved in a, in a, in a drug business with the, up in the park. With and was that always with you? No. No, he did that on his own with this guy Larry Lutz and him and Johnny Gabbett. And uh, later on, it was an incident where he, me and him went after the guy to try to rob him. And, you know, I shot him in the back. I mean, he was with me and uh, had a gun also with me. And, you know, so. 
Yeah, I mean, we were, so I was working a park, 79th Street Park, very well known, very infamous park. Johnny Gabbert, who's, uh, his uncle was um, Mad Dog uh, Sullivan. Sullivan, who used to used to do hits for the Gambinos. He was an enforcer, he was in jail, very famous. Very, guy, very yeah. well known, and he actually killed one of the first, um, uh, who was the guy that he killed? He was the first guy that actually broke out of Sing Sing. So he was in Sing Sing, he broke out of Sing Sing, they caught him. But he was a wild guy, just a wild. Uh, so Johnny Gebbett and me were uh, got tight. And Johnny was tight with Johnny Gebbett, and then I got tight with Johnny Gebbett. We grew up with them on and off, and then we ran the park. When we were doing pot, we were running like, I don't know, $4,000, $5,000 a night back in the early 80s. So um, it was, uh, you know, we, I would pick up. We'd go pick up on the Rastafarians. It's very dangerous because we robbed the Rastafarians one time. Mm -hmm somebody that they knew so we used to go down jamaica avenue and pick up and they somebody somebody they knew it but it was one of those standoffs where everyone just said let's just back off like one of those deals where they knew something happened they didn't want to get into it because we were big customers so they let that fly um but we walked into a situation that was very dangerous it was me johnny and larry was in a car um and the one night Johnny's referring to is we were running the park from early in the morning to late at night. And I worked the park also. I ran the park and worked it. So uh, this one particular night, um, I had a lot of people coming up and down. It was a crazy night. One of those nights where you know you shouldn't be there. If you're there, you're like, oh, this is the bad day. This is not going to work out. And uh, my, I remember my girlfriend came up because I had a lot of girls that used to come up there and meet me, hang out with me and whatever. And so my girlfriend came up, and I remember my girlfriend coming up, Michelle, and she was trying to get the girls to leave me that were hanging out in the daytime. But what happened was a guy came up, a uh, good-looking Italian guy came up, and he said, uh, excuse me, he goes, what do you got? I said, what do you need? And she, he says, uh, well, whatever you have. I said, I got pot. What do you want? So then he walked through. He goes, oh, I'll come back. And I said, see that guy? That guy's going to come back and rob me. Why I said that was because he asked me what I have. Mm. Everyone knows it's a pop up. No one's going to ask you what you have. So a lot of things happened in the course of that night. They did the, the long bus. They do a bus every four months. Somebody pointed me out. Cops came from every angle of the park. It was dark. And um, I took off. So what happened was about 10 o'clock, DTs, detectives, unmarked cars. Everyone's coming from every angle. It's pitch black in the park where I'm at. It's can't carry a gun because it's all undercover cops. So you really can't, you, you're like a sitting duck, basically. You're there by yourself. No dog, no guns, no, no, no bats, nothing. Guy comes down, cops, uh, buys a dime bag from me, Mark Bill, goes back. Cops come running from every angle. Cars coming from every angle. This is their big bus where they're going to beat that fuck out of the guy that's dealing me. And um, especially if I run. And they're going to get all the shit that they need to do. So I take off in the woods. They're coming after me all over. I see guns f flying, freeze. I see badges. I see everything. And um, so that was it. I, I got away, and that was the night. They were looking for the stash for the rest of the night. Two hours, you had maybe 25, 30 people gathered waiting for pot for the rest of the night. That's how many people were hooked on the stuff. Jesus. But what happened after that is my friend convinced me to go up and sell the rest of the stuff since we had so many people waiting. And I went back up to the park, and uh, which was, was just a couple blocks away, watching the whole scene go down with the crowd. Because the cops didn't know who I was. They were just looking. But anyways, we go back up. Under my, I knew that this was the wrong thing to do. I felt that every gut in my, you know, in my system knew this is not going to work out well. Went back up. And I noticed two guys were standing apart from the, the rest of the crowd. So that was my first, somebody's gonna, someone's gonna, is gonna try to take me off. But instead of walking away, which I usually just said, fuck it, let me just leave. There was something in part of me that just said, fuck them. I don't give a fuck. And um, so, which was a stupid, stupid thing in retrospect. And I knew it was dumb even when I did it. But I guess I had something to prove. So I walked out. The guy pulled out a gun and a, and a dagger, and he whacked me over the head. They jumped on top of me, and they were ripping out my pants and ripping my clothes. They were ripping my money out, pot, everything I had. And um, I looked up a couple times because I was down, and I was trying to look up, and he put the gun to me. He says, motherfuck, you look one more motherfucking time. I'll blow your fucking brains off. And the guy was a serious guy. He was not like a... 
serious guy, when two guys come up, they're serious. If they came up with like 12 guys or 10 guys or eight guys, they're full of shit. So two guys come up, they're serious guys. And um, so the other guy had a dagger in my throat. The one guy had a big 45. So I'm thinking, why is that guy got a knife and one guy got a gun at me? I'm thinking, is this gun loaded? So I'm trying to figure it out really quick. It's going through my mind. And uh, before I could you know, do anything else, they get everything out and they start dragging me. They don't know what they're going to do with me. They're thinking, should we waste this guy or not? Now, everyone that was waiting, they all ran down the hill. There's a, it's a big hill that goes down to the street. And he, the guy pointed the gun towards them, and they all went running down, including my partner. So when they were bringing me up these stairs, now Johnny will tell you, it's very desolate. There's nothing there. It's pitch black. You're by yourself. No one could see shit. Well, the reason why the spot's there and it's desolate, because if the cops are coming, we're able to see. We're up high. So they can come above us still, but you can still see when they come. So it's a good spot and it's quiet and it's not in the neighborhood because it used to be a neighborhood spot right on the corner of 79th Street, Jamaica Avenue, which brought too much heat because too many people complained. There was right. too many people coming. So when he moved it up there in one aspect, it was a good idea. The bad aspect of it is what he just said. So they got me up to the top and in the last second, they said, what do you want to do with him? And they said, fuck him, let him go. And then they, they dropped me. And uh, I went after them. I went above the thing. By the time I got over the top of the hill, they were gone. So the rest of the night I spent looking for them. And uh, I went to the, to the Woody Court Park. We went to uh, Ricky Stratton's park. Yeah. Well, you know, what happened is, so the people that are listening, is Johnny Gabbett is uh, the same guy we kill later on uh, that I ordered a murder from uh, Gotti's. Actually, Gotti Sr. ordered that murder with uh, Georgie Grasso, his brother-in-law, for several reasons. One, they tried to hit uh, Ronnie one and Jojo Carrazzo. He, he, he was involved in a rape, a gang rape. He was, he tried to kill me with Georgie another time, and uh, there was incident after incident with him. And he's also the guy that, uh, you were talking about the Rostos, that he was partners with John Gotti Jr. in the, in the weight business, and they got robbed, and then me and Johnny Gebbett uh, shot him up, and uh, I don't know how many of those guys died at that hit, but... That was one of the first hits we did. I was the driver. Johnny was the, the shooter. So Johnny had a wild side to him, and uh, he intimidated a lot of guys. Yeah, no, but Johnny's wild. He didn't want to, I mean, he shot a lot of guys at the, in those days. Stabbed. He tried to stab his own father. He was, you know, he tried to shoot one of his brother-in-laws and his brother-in-law's partner. So he's no, you know, he's not no punk. You know, he, he wasn't strong with his hands, but he was wild with a gun and a knife. And he's been stabbed up a couple of times and shot, shot up. up. And uh, he was supposed to look for the guy that robbed him. Well, we did go once, a right? One time, but he we, didn't really they, get that they, they, No, no, they gave half an effort. Yeah. So me, Johnny's brother-in-law, Larry, uh, Johnny Gebbett, my brother, myself, we went looking for the guy. And uh, it was half-heartedly, I think, on their side. They just felt like they had to do something. Um, I was more aggressive. Johnny was more aggressive with well, this. I think he knew because it was my brother that me and him were going to go shoot him. Mm. So I don't think he right. made that. Right, I think you're right. I think you know? you're right. And then... You know, we went, we got a, we got a, a low down on where he was. I got him and I says, you know, let's go. I got him a gun and he, he doesn't want to get involved in the killing like me. But I think you were pissed off that if you were in that situation, you would have used a gun. I don't know. You yeah. Know I, your own it, mindset. At, the, at the point I was ready to use it. First of all, I, I think this guy's packing anyway. So I'm thinking, all right, well, we have to have guns any, either way. Right. But I would have, I would have preferred to just, Beat him up bad. And I'm against the beating up bad, he knows. So when we were in the car, I knew where he was. I said, let's go, let's get in the car. And we, we got him. And uh, we both got out. And I said, you just tell me if it's him. And we just happened to catch him as he was going in a house in East New York. And uh, they, I said, is that him? He goes, yeah, it's, it's him. And we went after him. And the kid took a couple shots at us. I think two shots at that time, just blindly as he was trying to run up the stairs. And I just went through the door. Him was behind. He didn't, actually he couldn't really shoot, even if he wanted to, because he was a, two steps behind me. Would have hit me. And I just shot up, and I hit the guy in the back, yeah. and uh, we took off. So, um, you know, the, listen, that lifestyle uh, is. He was on the cusp of the same thing because he is coming on this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the guy that we batted. We don't really know what happened to him. Maybe, you know, because the police, you know, back in those days, it was different to what the police. Right, but, right, right. A lot but different. maybe he got killed. We don't, you know, maybe that's why they never talked. 
I mean, because there was nothing to say after. I don't, I'm not really sure why. Because we had your car. They could have grabbed the plate. But back in those days, they didn't have it. wasn't that. It was crazy. because It was what? It was mid-90s, I guess. Because I'm pulling Johnny off. I go, John, the car's right there. I'm, I'm literally like, Johnny goes to me after the fight. Wow, you were really calm. <laughs> I, I go, the car's there. There's a, oh, there's a shitload of cars there. people but, there. But no one knew it was our car because it was pulled over on the side of the road, sort of like in the dirt. And it was small car. It was Denise's car. And it was... Uh, it was like a, it was dark. You couldn't see the plate. So I, when I got in the car and we got in the car, I just left the lights off and just took off. Mm. But at that point, it was so much cast. No one knew who was who, what was what, what was, you know, you know how that gets where everyone's just well, like. All the cars are pulling over now. Yeah. So there's a lot of cast. A lot of cast. Yeah. There's on. about, there was a lot of cars. I mean, some people in the, in the front, it was us. But once we got through. Yeah. No one knew. Like, really, cars were taking off and not taking off. And so we're, 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 but Johnny Gabbett. It shot up the one 101st Avenue bar one PM time. PM Pub. PM Pub, which was uh, Ronnie One Arms and Jojo. I guess Jojo. Well, it was Cross. mine and Ronnie One, but he, Jojo was there. Jojo was yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, so Johnny dared these guys, and these guys. I, we we did talk a couple times because I was running the park. Me and Johnny had a falling out. Me and Johnny Gebbit. We had some run-ins. I think I told my brother about it. Um, Johnny Gebbit was got jealous of me after a while because I started getting too much of attention. It was just a tension thing. It wasn't like about money or anything else. So uh, there was a couple of instances with me and Johnny where Johnny came up and, and pretended like he had a knife. One was in the, at the Old Brother Inn and one was on Forest Parkway. But Johnny knew I wasn't afraid. I wasn't afraid of him at all. So I says, John, bring it on. What do you got? Let's do it. You know, what are you gonna do? And then he caught me again one time. We, I was walking down out of my house at about 1.30 in the morning down Forest Parkway. Johnny Kevin was coming up. I knew it was him. He knew it was me. You we just knew, you know, even though it was like a couple of few blocks away, you could just see the silhouette, the outline. He knew and I knew. So I just walked right to him. And we already had that falling out in the bar. Well, he was a rabid dog for the people. Who right, know, right. You know, he, yeah, he's a drug. He'd be your best friend. He's doing drugs. He's doing smoking right. dust. He's shooting heroin. Yeah, sorry. He went after his own family. So the people that don't know, one of the reasons why when we decide to kill him is, you know, he's partners with, with Gotti. He's also involved in a rape. And then he goes on the run. So, you know, it, there was too many things. He was, and the, the, John Gotti, the father, wanted him dead because... He, he had too much access to John Gotti Jr. Could have got him a, a serious case because he's involved with him. And he was up in a park another time. He, I suppose he killed a guy with him and this guy Fitz and, and Jr. was there. So there was a lot of There was a lot exposure. of interaction with Gotti. Yeah. yeah. And with, then Gotti actually is the one that instigated uh, the, the incident with Johnny Gebbett with the, with the park. Right, right. Because right. at that time, if I'm wrong or, or right, but I'm pretty sure this is how it started, Get. Gotti was getting money off him. Yeah, he was. And uh, Vinnie Gotti and his and Ronnie Warnham and Angel Costelli wanted some money. And Vinnie argued with Junior and says, well, go up to Gebbett and go get more money from him and tell him I sent you. And, and they try to shake him down for more. Gebbett didn't put up with it and pulled guns on him. And then that's when he went to the PMM and shot, shot them yeah. at the place. Like Johnny was no, the, listen, see, this is what I'm trying to get into. So let's go back. Go, let's go back to the rape. For a second, because when I got back, when I got involved with these guys, I got involved. I was I had one foot with the Italians and my brother, and I had one foot with the Irish. So I was back and forth. I didn't want to get pegged down with anybody, and I started seeing things more in, in a in a larger light, so to speak. Johnny was just he was very focused, my brother, and his focus was he was running things in the neighborhood. There's no question about that. Anyone that says anything different is bullshitting. You know, it's just, just, it is what it is. So John had brought a lot of respect or a lot of fear and respect to a lot of people all over the place. So Johnny was pretty eclectic where he was friends with a lot of guys from a lot of families. It wasn't just Junior. It was other families. They all knew who Johnny was. So Johnny actually was Johnny... Gotti's Jr.'s protector, for lack of a better word. And, and John Gotti Jr., he, he you know, contributed the name a little bit. So now you got Gotti and A-Light, right? Um, but go backwards real quick, because I want to say one thing, other, one other thing about Johnny Gebbett that I wanted to clear up, is Johnny Gebbett was involved in a rape 
Now, in that rape, was was Johnny Rich involved with him? Yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly because I was in California. I was out of town when it happened. So I heard different stories who was exactly there. I know Sal Puma was there who later on gets killed. J Johnny and, with Jerry yeah. Jr. might have been there. We don't know. I don't want to say anything for sure because it, it, it's, you know, he's passed away. Um, there were a few other guys, wise guys, that might have been there at the time. And uh, Johnny was in jail. They they cute. They got him for rape. Now, when I got involved, I was a womanizer, right? I, I was always getting a lot of hot women. So Johnny and Johnny said, "Listen, why don't you pick up this guy who's a witness against John's sister?" So I says, well, "Where is she? Where does she live? Where's you know where she hang out?" And they told me Sixty Park. That was a park where everyone went and hung out and everything. So I went there the next day. And I picked her up, brought her back to, I, actually, she left while I was playing basketball. And I, I ran, I, and I caught her right before she got, like, I saw her walking. And I got her right before she got into her house. She went to the row home. And I walked in. I knocked on the door. I don't know why I had the balls to do things like this. But I knocked, because she only met me that for a few minutes. I knocked the door. She let me in. I drank lemonade with her. We talked, whatever. And I found out where Sal was in Florida. Now, I was told by everyone at the time, no one's going to do anything to Sal. We're just going to talk to him because Sal was a witness against Johnny with the rape. Obviously, I got Sal's location. Johnny Gabbett went after him, went shoot. They, they shot, shot him. him. Yeah, they shot, shot, shot him. Shot him and he shot Turtle. Shot Frankie DeMeo, too. Who was he, oh, did, I didn't know yeah. he shot. Yeah. So I wasn't aware of that when that happened, that they were going to. I really, that wasn't. I, I thought it was. And I didn't know that Johnny did the rape because when you have friends like that, you see him a certain way. You don't see. I didn't see Johnny as a rapist. It, that that just didn't occur. Well, actually, I and what happens when too. you have an, I mean, especially in the, in the mafia, when you have an allegation like that, they take that very seriously. Well, Gotti, the father now, you know, you know, at, at that time, uh, calls me in, and I have a conversation with him. Junior uh, is worried about it too because obviously I don't know what the Junior's involvement was in that situation, but he's also his partner in the drug business. Mm. And we already just killed some Jamaicans. How many, who the hell knows, or Ross Ferentz, whatever. So there's a lot of exposure there. So the decision is, even I believed at the time, he's not guilty of the rape. Until the trial, I started going to the trial. Right, you didn't and think so at no, first. No, and the father asks me, uh, you know, because they told me to go to the trial. And I'm going to the trial, and his, uh, he's got a very famous lawyer. Was the, the lawyer, I think it was. Uh, who, yeah, who uh, was it again? Which he, uh, no, he was, no, uh, with the long hair? Weissman or something. I forget his name right now. But his father was a judge. That's why he used him. And they asked me now to report back what's going on at the trial. Now, after going to the trial, I says, this guy's guilty. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize he was guilty like this because, you know, we knew him. He lived around the corner. I was friends with his family. He's working with them. Uh, you know, I'm taking his side first. And then I realized when he shoots one of our friends, Frankie DeMeo, then he shoots Sal Tomasulo. And he's shooting guys that we grew up with, and they're talking to me, and they're saying he's fucking full of shit. And they tell me to so now I'm in a trial, and I'm listening, and I know he's guilty, and he gets convicted. Yeah, flat. We, Johnny's opinion changed, but here's the thing: we again, you grow up with somebody, you're close with them, you're doing everything, and you're hanging out with them, you're working, you're doing business with them, you're doing dangerous things. Me and Johnny did a bunch of dangerous things together, where we went after other guys who were wild, that had that were in the pot business. Also, I don't want to mention their names. I think I mentioned it to you. Uh, it's in the, the pot two, business, but... Two brothers, the two brothers that that, that were in the pot business, that the wild guys, I forgot their names right now. They were down on Myrtle Avenue. Oh, the Dolphins. Yeah. They one of them the, died, too. Yeah. The Dolphins yeah. tough kids. Yeah, we they went... hated Gabbett. They shot. They stabbed him up, too, and he got lucky. He lived to get Gabbett. Gabbett had nine jo lives. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny brought me down there with a couple. We had guns, bats, and he just, the last second, said, come on, Jimmy, we're going after these guys. I was like, fuck, who are we going after? And Not that I was serious afraid. serious Irish guys. They were tough guys. I not that I was afraid. It's just that I didn't want to hurt. So I didn't know them. Do you understand? This is, a, this is a different. I have a different mentality going on than they do. My mentality is I'm going to protect who I have to protect, like my brother or somebody I care about. So I'm more like uh, the guy that's going to say, oh, oh you, you fuck with my friend Felix. Okay, I'll step in front of you. But I'm not the guy that's aggressively going to rob you for money. Mm -hmm. or do, this is just well, not even, And even the rape, so you know, and the people are listening, this is not just a rape. It, they beat her half to death. You know, it was a serious, they almost killed her. And so you find this out as you're at the trial and like. As in trial, because I'm out of state when this is going on, when I come back. 
and well, it's called, what you know, God is protecting him when he gets convicted. Yeah. And you know, he, Junior, I'm talking about. He and he hides him. He helps hide him, which I'm crazy about. Like you know, and, and I start talking, and the father orders him dead. The father orders, him, you know, obviously a lot of people dead, and is asking for different <laughs> hits. And uh, you know, so he's marked for death. Junior doesn't have the authority to cancel it or any other mm -hmm. thing, unless that order comes down from the father to call it off. But that wasn't going to happen. And uh, you know, so. You know, I'm going to kill him. You know, he's ordered to get killed. His brother was ordered to get killed. We killed the brother in law. Now we're looking for him. And there's other guys that were ordered to get killed. There are orders that, you know, it's not our, uh, you know, choice. Oh, it's on, it's off. No, it ain't. The, 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 the guy who we called, you know, the chief, he's the one that's uh, calling that shot. Real quick. So even, even though you know that it's probably pretty likely that uh, he's going to go to jail for the rape case, God, he still wants him to be killed. Oh, he, he's already convicted at this point. He's already convicted. And he jumps his bail. Uh, and Gotti Jr. helps him, unbeknownst uh, okay. to his father, helps him hide. What now, I don't know why he's helping him he hide because out. he's either there's some something he's covering or he's in, worried about the drug case and his uh, father finding out he's doing Well, he might have been worried about the money. I don't, well, he was worried. He wasn't about, getting that much. But he, listen, Johnny, when, when John got, Gebbett went bad with us, we wanted to take the park. So we were trying to get permission from the old man or, or from yeah, Junior. Yeah, it's from the father. From the, the father at the time knows what's going on. We didn't really, yeah. So, so Junior, though, for some reason was afraid. I think he was afraid of John. I'm I think not... he had, you know, he's, oh, he was intimidated by him for sure. Yeah. They were all intimidated. This, this is a guy that was on a, a very serious show as a kid, the David Susskind show. Remember that show? Yeah, he was the yeah. first, he was 12 years old. This guy's already out stabbing and stabbing shooting people, guys at yeah. a young age. Yeah. And he's doing all kinds of drugs. He was so high on that show. So, you know, this is, you know, he betrayed all of our friends. So, you know, for me, this was a very simple decision. I had him a couple of times where I could have killed him. And he was, he was holding it back, Junior, from his father. His father knew what was going on and ordered it. You know, once that's ordered, and we talk yeah. about this, uh, you know, Junior tried to call that off at one point and protect him. And uh, one of the guys he sent to me, can't do it, this guy, Steve Kaplan. And I told him, listen, I'm going to prison in the next week. He'll be dead within a month. And two weeks later, when I, as soon as I went and stepped into prison, my guys killed him, my cousin and a couple other guys I, I you know, talked to. And they, they hit him in front of uh, one of the bars by my house. One of the bars, yeah. And so, you know, but this is not a, a soft guy. And before that, he survives another shooting that a uh, kid Tommy shoots well, him up five times. Right? Yeah, we we had an order to kill him at sight, and he came pulling up to the PM pub actually to talk and try to settle him shooting at Ronnie Wanham and Jojo, and Tommy hit him five times with a nine millimeter. Here's my point, Felix. So you, know, you don't have to serious. be mobbed up to be a tough guy. So so or you don't have to have a button to be a tough guy. Um, these guys, you know, a lot of these guys, listen, I have a lot of friends who, who are in the mob and through Johnny. Johnny knows. I know a lot of uh, uh, everybody. And a lot of these guys are good guys and a lot of them are not. A lot of them are tough guys and a lot of them are not. But, you know, they have this, this club. If you, if you have that badge or if you have that thing, you're somebody. If you don't have that thing, you're not. Uh, at least in that life, in the, in the, in the lifestyle. It's really just a lot of bullshit. It's a lot of nepotism, a lot of, you know. Are there some real guys there? Of course there are. Are there a lot of guys that shouldn't be there? Of course there are. Mm. And there's vice versa, the same thing. There's guys that should be there, but they're not, either not there because they didn't want to be there or they're not full Italian or... Now, when it goes back to my brother, my brother really, again, it's not because he's my brother. I could give a fuck who he is, but I, you know, I love my brother no matter what, but my brother really was the guy that did the dangerous things. Forget the killings, forget the shootings, forget the things. So he went into harm's way, right? He went into harm's way with no one else would do. Now I did that on a smaller scale because I wasn't with him. So I did it on other scales, but not the same scale as my brother. He did it with, with really dangerous guy. I did it with guys that I'd run into on the streets and mm. whatever, whoever it may be. But Johnny would be the lead guy in all the time. So. When Johnny says, or when people say John didn't do, John did this or didn't do this, or they, they just talk shit, the fact of the matter is, when everything is said and done, he did things that nobody else would do. It's just a fact. With other, with, now I can give you so many stories, but I'm not going to go into them now, and I'll leave that for another time. 
but he did do that and he was well known and anyone that says anything later on that he wasn't or used God's name is just just nonsense it's just bullshit hey everybody out there for people that don't know i have a patreon uh channel that you can subscribe to please and uh, we'll talk about content that is not out on youtube is exclusive uh, we'll cover q a on a regular basis once a month we sell my baseball bats and the autographed and we will talk about content that you won't hear anywhere else but here on patreon thank you everybody please reach out and subscribe thank you did you um how is your relationship i guess are you guys' relationship through all of that were there um, you know, ebbs and flows or, you know, when he, when he went away, did it, did it change a little bit? I mean, how? No, no, not at all. Not at all. I mean, w after tonight's thing, we'll go down and we'll fucking box it out. <laughs> but, but. Who's going to win? I, I would like to say me, but you know, he's going to say him and I'll say me. What's the age difference? We don't talk about yeah. age. We, uh, I have too many girls listening. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mentally, uh, but a year uh, old. <laughs> listen, I was a VP stockbroker, so you take it from there. Right. So, so speaking of the stock, because uh, John had mentioned that earlier, um, I guess what were some of the the dealings that you had, uh, you know, legitimate or illegitimate, um, with regards to the stock market? Yeah, we were. You know the movie The Boiler Room. I don't know. Okay, it was with Vin Diesel, Ben Affleck, Scott Kahn. Oh, yeah, I think, yeah, now I know what you're talking about. Okay, so that was based on my firm. My firm was called J.T. Moran. It was, they used J.T. Marlin. We were in Garden City. They, they, they were in Garden City. So it was, it was based on my firm. Now, the story about the kid with the, um, that had the gambling thing going, I know you didn't see it. That was fictitious. Could have been loosely based on some parts of me and so could have been diesel part and so could have Scott Kahn's part because if at that firm, I was the guy, you know, sort of, well, my cousin owned the firm. So, you know, my cousin, Bob Greg Hasho, and he went partners with Gary, Gary Emilius, who was, well, Gary Emilius got shot in the head. So, so you understand they were all mobbed up. Everyone was we were, mobbed we were up. All involved. We had a sports business out of there. Well, these guys were running the thing. My brother helped me run the sports business with inside the firm. And my cousin married Maddie the horse. I know. I was, I was in the wedding party. He's a very powerful gangster. He married the, the niece. So, you know, these guys, so, you know, our, our family's tied into everything. And from that business, it involved me and, and these guys and, you know, whatever they were fuck around with stock. Well, we were running stock, too. We were trying to run stock at the end. I, Listen, we were, in a lot, we were in a lot of trouble. A lot of guys got questions. They asked about the relationship between Gotti and me. In fact, Gotti's mother... One day they wanted to buy stock through me, uh, Mrs. Gotti, Victoria Gotti, Nest Senior. And um, I said, John, what are you talking about? Is I rob people. I don't do this. But I had a couple of accounts with Mike Boats and a few other guys who yeah, were. I forgot about Mike Yeah, Mike Boats. Boats. Mike Boats got involved with us through Detective Phil Barone that yeah. was involved with oh, yeah. did the murders. Mike, uh, Phil Instagram was involved with everything. Actually. The son or the father? Uh, Phil Baroni, or Phil Baroni, or Phil yeah, Barone. Phil Baroni. One's the son. Which one? The uh, son or the ex-fighter? I don't. I don't oh, and the yeah. father. He lived with me as a young kid, okay. and uh, just for a year, or whatever, yeah. he was having trouble with his father. And the father was the uh, Phil Barone was. Detective. He was a detective. Good, for very. I mean, like very close with us for a long time, and he introduced us to all the top cops. I mean, we knew. Tell them who we... Oh, we know everybody. Morgan Dodds, district attorney's driver. Bo, I used to go to Bo Deedle's Christmas parties and, you know, and other detectives. And, you know, he was involved with me at Buttles in a, in a, a big fight. And he was involved with me in murder. I mean, listen, Phil, and then he moved with me in Jersey, too. He lived across the street from us. Yeah. So he followed us from New York to Jersey also. And, you know, so traveled with me. He was my partner. So, so wait, so what kind of uh, so, practices, let's say, did you take part in with... At when you're doing the stocks. Well, you got to remember something. As I'm as I go into the stock business, right? So, I start off you know, I decide at one point I'm going to leave this street life. And I I feel like, look, I can get my own. I get beautiful girls on my own. I make money on my own. How old are you when you said 26. This? Okay. You know, and and I was getting bored. I was bored. You know how you just outgrow something mm -hmm. and you outgrew the 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 adrenaline rush. You, you outgrow it. And then you say, where's my future? So that was one of the things. So I went to work. That was a good decision. It was a good decision. <laughs> you actually. saved yourself 20 years. Yeah. And so, um, and I saw the big picture. I kind of saw it, but I wasn't in like my brother, obviously. So, um, but anyway, I've become a stockbroker because I have a good mouthpiece. I'm very personal. I got a lot of charisma. So people 
are talking about me. And my cousin, he doesn't give a fuck if I'm his cousin or not. He wants to make money. Mm. So he says, Jimmy's really good. You know, I well, want to. Well, let me cut you off again. He he works for my cousin. He, You talked to Michael Francis for the last couple of years. Yeah, on a regular right, basis. right, right. Michael Francis, I don't even know if he's aware of this. His first with Joey's. Joe Capolino. Capolino's his first, second, whatever he is. I took care he's of him. He's my brother's partner. So, yeah. you know, they were I took care of him right. for years, Joe Cap. Joe Cap, well, you get him on the show one time. I'll tell you a lot about, you know, what we, what I did and what we did. But the thing is, we were running sports. We were trying to run uh, stock deals. So basically, we were working with shell companies, shells. There were shells. And um, we the, the company, my company, would buy the stock at, let's just say, 20 cents. And then we'd sell it out to people at, let's say, 45 cents or 50 cents or a dollar, you know, whatever their markup was. And then they would give us a cut. The stockbrokers would get a cut on that. But we got a very low cut. Because if you look at Jordan, Belford, mm -hmm. okay, Jordan started off at investments, investors, right? That was the first firm that Jordan worked for before he had his own firm. And investors were getting 50% cuts. Meaning that if you're a stockbroker at investors like Jordan was, you sell uh, $10,000, you're making 5,000 in your pocket. We're doing the same shit stocks as they're doing, and we're getting, I think we were getting about 10, 11, 12% tops, anywhere from eight to 13%, I think. Okay, so we're really getting shit. So if I'm working with, jo I mean, if I'm working over at Investors with Jordan, I'm making 50% of what I make. Never mind being a VP and getting overrides. I'm becoming rich. Then Jordan opened up his own firm. The fuck was the name of his own firm? I forgot it. Jordan knows who I am. Tony Bell used to work with me, used to live at the, uh, at the Bayside, uh, I forgot what they call it, the base. It was a big- Bay Towers. Bay Towers, right. And that's where Jordan lived. Look at that memory. With, with Tony, yeah, good memory. Jordan had a, had a Ferrari, uh, Ferrari at the time, a couple of Ferraris probably, but t I was too hot to touch. He says, oh, this guy's got a million things going on, they're watching him. So, but I'd like to talk to Jordan actually. But, um, we were just getting so little compared to what George. So what we wanted to do now is we were running the sports game with a lot of the brokers, but we also wanted to start getting involved in these shells and bring the own, uh, bring our own companies to Greg. And so, because that's where the money was. You bring that in and you have 300 brokers we had about, and we were aggressive, hard fucking brokers. I mean, you were great, great salesman. It was a good, it was a good playground for me in the sports business, plus loan sharking business because right. you're loaning them. Yeah, and because you know, everyone's so, doing coke. And then, and, I, I, yeah. Coke, yeah. And then these guys are meeting us. They used to fly down by helicopter and meet us in Atlantic City, and you know, so that they, they were, you know, they were good customers for coke for sports for Shylock, and they're moving, and they were collecting from. So when they're having trouble with different things with money, big money, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, whatever it was, we're doing the collecting. And you got to remember something. That's nothing to these guys. Yeah. You know, because these guys are making fifty, sixty thousand dollars at a at a pop, on some on some trades. So that's cash, and they're just gambling it away. But I didn't really want to get into it because I was making so much money as a stockbroker. I didn't need all the side shit. But it was just given. It was there for me for the taking. Did you um, did you ever get in trouble with uh, you? You never did any time. No, I got arrested a bunch of times. I got him locked up a couple of times. <laughs> Don't worry, I did him a favor and got him locked up. <laughs> he got pulled over by some cops one time, and I was with God. He was driving Gotti's car. He's he with car. the mother's car. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't have, listen, the car had no registration, no paperwork, no nothing. He's on Jamaica Avenue, 89th Street. Yeah, I remember that. And me and Gotti are driving by the sun, and we see him <laughs> in the Jaguar. He's in the white Jaguar. So they're asking They me had shotguns stuff. on me. They had everything on him. On when me. they pulled up, there was fucking 10 cop cars on him. So I walk over and the cop says, get over there and wait over there. And I said, I'm going to go over there. He goes, go over there. And I says, well, I don't like the, now at this time, those priests used to give you some beating. This is in the 80s. Right, it was right. different. Yeah. You know, so you got beaten. So I said, no, I'm not going over there. Anyway, I, I, I get my way over there and we start arguing and I push the cop in the bushes <laughs> and that was it. They all jumped us, swinging yeah. at us, piping us, you know, black with the sticks yeah. and they arrest us. <laughs> He looked at we me, the, he goes, you can't mind your fucking business? Uh, that we, was one. We're both in the back seat, cuffed together. I go, all right, we'll have some fun. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, I got arrested a bunch of times for uh, terroristic threats and beating up people. Fought with the cops a bunch of times. I had, I got beat up by the cops, by seven cops a few years ago. I got cop, fight with cops in the Hoboken. 
bunch of uh, two cops knocked on my window. They said, open your fucking window. I go, fucking talk like a gentleman. And the cop said something else threatening. I go, what? You're going to threaten me? Joe Capolino was in the car. I go, Joe, get out of the car. I go, walk across the street because I didn't want Joe to get in trouble. So I got out of the car and the two cops were standing there. And I go, okay, now what are you going to do? And they went and they called in help. And then it was a scene. You know, everyone came from. But hold on a second. I'm pro police. <laughs> Listen, I, no, I, I like that. There's always some cops that have been. Yeah, it was I mean, back. It was, it, Listen, it I'm not saying I was right. I'm not saying I was wrong. I would handle it a lot different today, obviously. Well, you had a chip on your shoulder at the time. I did have you a know? chip on my shoulder. Yeah. yeah. So, a and it's, yeah. It's it, not that fault. It's not it's supposed to be. Yeah. You, know, I got, you know, I always say this. You know, I talk the truth. I go, listen, if, you know, I never have an incident anymore because I got a different attitude. It's the attitude that you give that causes these problems, mm -hmm. for the most part. Well, the, I mean, there's always a bad in everything. There's something bad. Well, you got to understand something. Part. Cops become cops sometimes because they like the power, just like the mafia guys like power. So, but you have to learn. What I've learned is you have to learn to eat it a little bit and just step back and say, let them go. Let them talk. Let them curse you out. Let them belittle you a little bit. It's not going to hurt you in the long run. I have I had trouble doing it. And John's right. It's just chip on my shoulder, just insecurity about being bossed around. So, you know, I don't have any hard feelings with anybody. But, uh, yeah, I've had situations with them and other fights, mostly fights. But never hard jail time. I never got caught doing anything except for fights. Wow. Um, do you feel like well, you want him to go? Yeah. No, yeah, you're trying <laughs> so to get wild. me in there, right? No. Yeah, yeah. Did you do anything that you should go to jail right now for? No, we, we talked about that before. I want to no. make sure. He said when it came to the house, he's like, "What are you picking on me for?" He's the guy shooting everybody. Uh, <laughs> no, um, I, 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 I got. I mean, I did some things like with drugs and sports and stuff like that. I never got caught. I never got. You know, I never. Well, you didn't get. I mean, listen, he's been around. Like you know, sometimes I even say to the guy, he didn't really do nothing like that. But then, he, on the other hand, he did. Even when I killed uh, Georgie Grasso, and I went back with 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 Gotti, even though I didn't want to go back to the murder scene, he actually got in another car because he was worried about when he followed us to the to Shea Stadium to you know well, the City Field yeah. to where it was, and he kept telling me, "Are you crazy?" Before I said, "What do you want me to do?" They want to verify. And I was, I was mad about it, actually, too. And uh, even Phil Baroni was steaming because I had to say that he was involved in the murder. He's like, what are you telling this guy? You know, he's going to be a rat. And I go, he ain't going to rat. He's got his son. And, well, <laughs> we know that story. <laughs> so, you know. Well, you, Johnny had a problem in 91. I don't know if you, you know, they had, they, they had, a, a, what, what year was that? Was it 91? No, it was closer to 93, actually. Okay. Yeah. Well, I went down to see Gotti. And I did it on my own. Yeah, yeah. I did it on my own. What happened was there was a lot of words back and forth on the street. Well, we were going to hit him in 94, actually, in Aqueduct. I mean, we were going to hit him a lot of times. But 94, we had a, a meeting, and he didn't know. But they had the meeting at Aqueduct. Aqueduct, right, right. But I couldn't bring guns in, so I had my cousin and a couple of guys. We, but there was too many ways out of the, uh, the war room in Aqueduct in those days. So we, we picked one entrance, hoping he came funny, back yeah. out. We were going to hit him out there, but he didn't come. Then my cousin went and hit him. My cousin used to go out with John Gotti, seeing his brother Richie got his daughter, Danielle, for six years. So my cousin went and hit him another time. We had him in the car at the end of 95. Then we were going to hit him when they gave me the machine guns and stuff. At the end of the beginning of 96, we went to jail. Then in 99, I mean, we had all kinds of plots to hit the guy and his uh, brother in law his uncle. So that's the life. That's the, the life I keep telling kids don't go into because yeah. this is just, you know, part of it. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, it was and crazy. He got involved and he didn't really know what was well, going I went on. Well, I went down to see Gotti. Now, I hadn't seen Gotti in a few years, but they were making threats on my brother's life. So I went down on my own one day and I just says, and I hadn't seen Gotti in a few years since I, I saw him when he was made, obviously. And then, then, he, then when he got his captain, I saw him again, congratulated him on that. And then I hadn't seen him because, again, I'm doing my own thing, I'm doing things with Johnny. I'm making my own money, got my own girl. I don't, what the fuck do I need you for? What do I need anybody for? And so, um, but at that t time, I was concerned about my brother. I was like, you know what, let me see if I can make this piece, right? So I go down to the club, and these are all new guys now. So they're all standing, these big guys, and new guys are standing in front of the, 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 the club, and they go, uh, I says, I want here to see Junior. John, got it, Junior. And they go, uh, who should we say? I said, just tell me it's Jimmy A. Light. So John's in there with a bunch of my friends. They're playing cards. 
So John comes right out. They come out. They, they let me in. And everyone says hello, kisses me. He was everyone's Frankie, Frankie Radice, uh, Steve Kaplan. It was uh, a whole bunch These of guys. These guys never done the work. Right? Yeah. The, the... But anyway, they were all they were all in there playing cards. We were playing cards, and then finally John goes, "Let's let's go out and take a walk." We go take a walk, and I go, "What's this I hear about my brother?" You know, is and he goes, "Well, you know, Jimmy, if he's doing that, selling that babanya, or if he's that's cocaine, if you don't know, uh, or if he's." Uh, Something, something about ratting or something like that. You know what's got to happen. I go, well, he ain't doing either one of those. I says, if you think he is, you might as well just kill me now. So John, you know, looked at me and says, all right, Jimmy, no worries, you know, whatever. And I says, uh, can you tell your brother? So, you know, it, it, it was, it, it was, he was nice. I mean, he was very nice, John. I'm not going to say he wasn't. Yeah, so after, though, after you came home, he gives me the message. I says, is that what he said? He goes, yeah, so... I went back and I shot Stevie Newell, who we had on the show. Oh, right? yeah. I, I uh, piped his, his uncle's brother-in-law, uh, his cousin, excuse me, his brother-in-law, Richie Gotti's son-in-law. I piped him. Uh, we killed Johnny Gabbett. We robbed Joel Kane twice and stabbed him up. I robbed his other drug business. I robbed the, the guy in Valley Stream and tied him up and shot him up. I robbed Ronnie one arm. And I started running through all his guys. And then in 97, we beat up Jeannie Gotti. And I said to him, well, I shot my cousin up who thought he was going to protect him. So See, I went on, I told him, I says, watch what I'm going to do to him now. And we were going to kill him. So I went through about nine of his guys, which we always go through all this. And I says, well, I'm waiting. I'm going to die of old age before they try to do anything except talk shit about me like he did with him. But, you know, that's it, the life. It, they it, talk. He did. He did. He did do a lot of things. If you take one of those incidents alone, right, it's it's something that, you know, if you did that once in your life, that's like crazy. Mm -hmm. But he did it repeatedly. The how he's alive is just pretty fucking amazing, you know? Well, I'm alive for a lot of reasons when people ask me that. Most of them got no balls. So, you you know, I'm dealing with guys that I know are full of shit. So when I take it to the limit, they're not going to take it there. That's for a second. They don't have experience of doing what I do every day for a living. That's what I did for them. I protected them. So when I do, that's the second reason. And third, when I go into where I go in, the way I go in, uh, I don't think they'll ever take I, I think there's a little bit of a rawness with us being from Jamaica Avenue as opposed to being from Money and Howard Beach and stuff mm -hmm. like that, where, uh, they're not, uh, it, it, again, I'm generalizing. Of course, there's a lot of guys, but there's a little bit of a rawness. You have to have a little bit of... Uh, natural hardness. Natural hardness. You have to have a little bit of a chip. It, it, it's sort of like uh, like Tommy De Simone played in uh, in Goodfellas. If you look at his character, his character is very raw, and he could flip out in a second if you if if you disrespect him. So there's like that chip that you can't invent. It's either there or it's not there. There's that. I told everyone. I always say this to everyone. The toughest guy in the room. Obviously, you have to be smart. You have to have some skills. But the toughest guy in the room basically is the guy that's willing to go the farthest. Mm -hmm. If I'm willing to go, the, if I'm willing to, to meet you and I'm saying, okay, we're going to do something here, but I'm willing to die. Are you willing to die for this? So if you're not willing to die, don't, don't get mm -hmm. involved. Don't, but you can't fake that. Well, the guys fake it. So you when can't a guy, fake When it. a guy fakes it, Joel Cain, as soon as he goes to jail, they kill him. When I went and took it to that limit, you can't fake it. That's why I got stabbed up. That's why I ended up getting shot. That's why I ended up getting baseball batted because I'm taking it to the limit that they won't. Mm. And I'm doing it when odds are against me. And these guys I know are full of shit because they've been in situations with me where they run and hide. And you can't, broke. you can't, you can't fake that. Like there's, there was one time when I was in the park, I was with this girl, 10 got 12, tw about 12 guys from Greenpoint, Brooklyn came up, all muscle guys it was in the summertime. And I had my stash. I was in the playground in the park. It was light daytime. I'm hanging out with a girl. So I got it in, in the sewer plate. So these guys come, I know right away what they're doing. I know they're coming to take me. No question in my mind. So I don't have anything on me except a dime bag, I think. So I go, what do you, what's up, guys? What do you need? And I know that what's coming. Now, I could have just played it off like I don't, no one's working. You know, they don't know who I am. But I, instead, I got to be a wise guy a little bit. So I go up there, what do you guys need? They go, well, 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 what do you got? I go, what do you mean, what do I got? What do you need? They go, well, you got pot? I go, yeah, yeah, what do you want? And he, he goes, well, we'll take, uh, we want weight. I go, okay, tell me what you want. 
So now there's one guy in front. He's the leader. He's the alpha. And there's about, this again, there's about 12 guys. Now I know they're pussies because you're going to do it with two or three guys. And I learned that from Johnny. And if you're going to do it, and then of course I got robbed by two or three guys. So if you're serious guys, you're going to come up with a gun. You're going to stick the gun to my head. And you're going to say, listen, give me all your shit or you're dead. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you all my shit. This is just how it works, right? It's one way or the other. So, um, and I would give the shit. I'll be honest with you. I would give it. If I had it, I'd give it to live another day. So, but these guys come up and I know they're full of shit. Now, I know the worst that's going to happen is I'm going to catch a bad beating by 12 guys who are going to pound on me. But I'm willing to take that chance. So I walk up to the guy and, I, and I'm talking. I see the guy, one of his guys circling a little bit to my left. And he's looking to like take cold clock me. I go, listen, guys, very calmly. You guys are here to rob me. He says, it's obvious. I go, you guys are fucking punks. Because there's 12 of you guys, or 14 of you, or whatever the fuck you got. Why don't you just get away before you get hurt? I'm not here by myself. And they just looked at me, and I says, you got a few seconds to make up your mind. And they just turned around and go, hey, it's all cool, and they walked away. In fact, funny <laughs> enough, Joe Kane came up literally 10 minutes after that. Not even 10 minutes after that, they took off. They probably had two or three, they had to have three cars. They took off. Again, so you learn to... You have it in six cents on who's who and what's what. You have to develop that. If you don't, you're fucked. You're dead. But the other thing, Felix, real quick is when I did that, it wasn't a bluff. Mm. Because if I ever bluff like that, that's when you get, if you bluff, you could, even if I were to bluff one time, you can't bluff more than like, like I did, like a thousand times. I'm exaggerating. But you have to be willing to like, that's it. Now I'm willing to, I know what's going to happen. Am I willing to take that beating? You have to say yes. Were there were there ever any uh, of the people that John worked with um, or his associates or whatnot um, in which you had uh, maybe personal beefs or, or friction with? You always do. You, you always do. Uh, right. I didn't like... Um, who was that kid, well, Michael? You, didn't like, you hated Joe King. You knew he was a punk. You always said, why is this guy around? He's a yeah, yeah, fucking weasel yeah. punk. He's I, a tough guy. I, I, I got to like him a little bit. Uh, I, I saw... You know, I try to find, I compartmentalize people. I try to find the good in them, but I can also read people pretty well, you know? I didn't like Michael, but to Ben and Marco. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I never liked him, yeah. uh, you know. Um, well, you did die. Yeah. I Actually, I was going to shoot him one day, but my cousin, he ran to everybody and their mother, and I said, I don't give a shit what anybody says. But then he went to my cousin, and my cousin begged me, a girl, don't hurt him. And he, she brought him to the house, and I Talk to him. I said, "You ever talk about me again?" Well, don't forget. He got close. To we really, went after you know? Johnny. We went after the you know Johnny's got his guy shot, Maddie Gavitt, and, and shot his balls off over an argument I had with Redden. What happened was my girlfriend at the time, his brother, was uh, he's good now. He's he's he doesn't do any good thing. But at the time, he had a problem with drugs, and he robbed them, and um, they were going to kill him. So I I set up a meeting. I was a stockbroker at the time, so I was out of it, but I was still had my foot, and you know. So I went to meet Brendan, who was very good friends with me. He was Brendan Gebbett, Johnny's brother. So I go to meet him, and he's outside with a fucking, a, a huge uh, with a, with a Mastiff. I think he had a Mastiff or a, 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 a Corso. A Corso, what do they call those dogs again? That uh, Yeah, King Corso. King Corso. Anyway, he had a huge dog out with him, and, you know, aggressive as shit. He's like, you know, whatever. And so I go, Brent, I go, listen, and I think everything's going to go well. I go, listen, what's going on with Joe? He goes, well, we're going to kill him. I go, no, you're not. I go, listen, I'm telling you to do me a favor. I said, the kid won't do it again. You know, he's got a problem. I got him. Relax. He goes, no, we're killing him. I go, listen, I came up here to talk to you. You're telling me you're going to kill him? I'll tell you what. You kill him, I'll kill your fucking workers every night. Every worker you have up there, I'll kill. How's that? So you do what, whatever you do to Joe, I'm going to do to your workers in the park. You understand? He goes, oh, you do what you got to do. I said, yeah, well, you do what you got to do. I'll do what I got to do. So you hit him. I promise you, your workers. So a few weeks after that, these guys shot Matty Gabbett in the balls. He lost a nut. He lost one of his balls. And then we had him baseball about it after that. Yeah. Sounds lovely. Yeah, well. It's a message. But anyway. that was, we had no choice. I mean, you know, you're threatening to kill my girlfriend's brother. 
He's an innocent guy. I mean, he's an innocent guy. Uh, so like Brendan, these guys they ain't doing nothing. But Johnny was dangerous. Yeah. yeah. So I guess also, you know, uh, I'd be curious to hear your take as well on because you obviously grew up in that and John, um, you know, one of the one of the main messages that uh, you know, John's about now and uh this show is about is trying to help those kids, you know, steer clear of this kind of life for you because you're also in it. And because you also had this, uh, this other aspect, uh, this other view on violence, right. um, you know, what's your, what's your advice to, to the kids that are out there that are listening to this right now that, you know, hear these stories, um, but realize that there's no, uh, or maybe don't know how to get out of it. Maybe, uh, are in it and, kind of want to stay in it but maybe they'll hear this and it'll change their mind for you what's what's the best piece of advice you have yeah uh someone's got to be open real quick someone's got to be open to wanting to change first of all you can't change anybody unless they're 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 seeking to change it's something in them has to be looking for something in their own way um so that's really important to say you're not going to change anybody that that's not a captive audience that said um the, you know the old story is you're going to go to jail or you're going to get killed. It just holds true. Your friends become your enemies all the time. So your best friend today will be your enemy tomorrow. Garen fucking teed. Not maybe. Garen fucking teed. The chances of you holding a friend in that business is very rare. It's extremely rare. So whoever you think is your stand-up friends right now, watch in two years, they're the guys that are going to set you up and kill you. Just the way the business works. It's the way it's always worked. And it's not just me just you know, giving you uh, uh, a good outline from things I heard years ago. This is how I, what I've seen. That said, there's so many opportunities today that there weren't for, for us maybe and back in the day. There's opportunities for everyone. Everyone's got a certain skill set. So what you have to do, exploit that, find out what you're good at, find out what you like, and, and go into that. Find your own space. You don't need to have other people to think, take you up because they're going to be the same people that are going to take you down. Mm. So it, again, it's sort of like a cult. You got to, you got to be a free thinker and look at the end of the day, I don't want to get too religious here and spiritual, but at the end of the day, we all pay a price. We all have karma, whether we believe it or not, it's a second law of physics. Every action has an equal or opposite reaction. So we all have to pay for our sins one way or another, and we have to repent. Why not? Why, why, if we're smart enough to understand that, and smart enough to understand a bigger picture, we will. So think of all of these things mm. and and digest them and think about what you really want for your future. Because short-term money is just that. Short-term, you're not going to see it in a few. What goes up comes down. Well said. Well said. And remember, everybody, what I always say, crime don't pay unless you pay with your life. Um, do the right thing and uh, don't follow this nonsense. There's stories and... Uh, to pass the suffering, uh, jails, death. And like I always say, if you go through all these names we're talking about, most of them are dead. The rest are in prison. And you're going to dedicate, uh, if you're doing anything serious, 15, 20 years and better in prisons. It's just not worth it. Enjoy your life. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy, for uh, Thank you very coming much. Thanks, Felix. It's James. great to meet you. Great to meet you. Same here. Nice to meet you again, John. <laughs> I'll see you later for our next fight. All right, for our next John fight. JohnElite.com on my website. Look it up. Follow us. The new book's coming out the end of the month. Uh, you can pre-order and uh, pre-buy them. And uh, look on National Geographic. It's out on November 9th. Uh, November 9th. June 9th. Uh, drug series about John Gotti Sr., the Mafia, Anthony Ruggiano, and myself. Uh, on the Run will be out shortly after that. And uh, we're uh, filming right now for in uh, uh, Denmark and Sweden with Klaus uh, TV series. Look up for all that stuff. Look out for all that stuff. Thanks, everybody, again. I'll do a little pay-per-view, you, John versus Jimmy. Yeah, why not? Ring. Why not? We're ready. Well, I'm having a lot of operations these days. I might have to... <laughs> I'm, I'm on my scooter now. I'm, I'm going to name the round, what, too. What was I'm going to name uh, the round. Yeah. You're going to name the round? I'm going like, to name like, the round. Like Cano? Like I'm going to say... Rap. Round two. That was really surprising. Sand does he hurt his son? Does he he hurt him to the body too much? Yeah. That he that he bowed out of that fight. I think it was round seven or eight. Which, or which fight was this you talking about? Eight over the week. Cano. 
It was, yeah, was yeah. it? Oh, I didn't see the Canelo. fight. How did you see Canelo. it? I didn't Canelo. even know they were fighting. Yeah, on his own. Yeah, I thought well, anyways. it was. Be a, but <laughs> he was fighting. Yeah, he was fighting. Thank you guys. <laughs> see you guys. See you guys later. Yeah.